Welcome back. In our last video, we looked at the geomorphic processes that are involved in creating landforms and landscapes. In this video, we will look at the biophysical processes that interact to create different landscapes and landforms. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Firstly, what are biophysical processes? Well, biophysical processes are interconnected sequences that form and transform natural environments in a cause and effect relationship. For example, the erosion, deposition, soil formation, nutrient cycling, and the effects of the weather and climate. Some of these we have already covered in previous videos. For example, erosion and deposition. However, what are the others? Well, let's start off with explaining the difference between the weather and climate, as this is one of the biggest impacts on what a landscape may look like, or the biome on it. Weather is the state of the atmosphere at a particular place and time as regards to heat, cloudiness, dryness, sunshine, wind, rain, etc. For example, how hot, wet, or windy it is at this very moment in your location right now. Climate is the weather conditions prevailing in an area over a long period of time. For example, a dry, hot desert's weather conditions over a prolonged time will have high temperatures and limited rainfall. The troposphere is the lowest region of the atmosphere extending from the Earth's surface to a height of about 6 to 10 kilometers. It contains 75% of the atmosphere's mass and 99% of the total mass of water vapor and aerosols. In this photo, you can see the Space Shuttle Endeavour silhouetted against the atmosphere. The orange layer is the troposphere, the white layer is the stratosphere, and the blue layer is the mesosphere. It is important to understand this because the lowest part of the troposphere, where friction with the Earth's surface influences airflow, is the planetary boundary layer, which heavily influences the wind, temperature, and moisture. This depicts the planetary boundary layer and wind dynamics over the Los Angeles basin during a one-month period. The gray blanket represents the planetary boundary layer's vertical motion. The height of the planetary boundary layer is mostly determined by convection, caused by changes in the Earth's surface temperature, for example, rising during the day and sinking at night. Wind intensity and direction are shown by colored arrows at various heights. You can see that weather and climate are very different, so you now know if someone is using the terms incorrectly. Day-to-day -day weather conditions vary in terms of temperature, wind speed and direction, cloud cover, precipitation, rain, hail, snow, humidity, and is mainly influenced by the troposphere. However, climate refers to long-term averages. We can look at a place on Earth, for example Antarctica, and say that its climate is that of an Arctic desert. Whereas, the jungles of Indonesia could be referred to as a tropical rainforest climate. Now that you understand the difference between weather, the climate, and how significant the troposphere is, let's look at some of the geomorphic processes covered in the previous video. Weathering and erosion are closely linked biophysical processes, sometimes being so connected that it can be difficult to separate them. For example, already eroded rock can blow up against existing rock and start weathering them. Weathering, erosion, and deposition all play a role in creating coastal landscapes. Ocean currents and tides play large roles in these processes. Beaches can be composed of quartz sands, calcareous sands, which are broken pieces of shells, volcanic, black, sands, or boulders that have been worn down by the constant pounding of wind and waves. This constant barrage by waves is referred to as hydraulic action and helps break down rocks by trapping air in tiny gaps that help break the rock apart. The sand on a beach can be moved along the coastline by longshore drift. This is where the wind will push waves onto the beach at an angle which will then drag sand away from the shoreline. This process repeats itself and eventually the sand will be shifted along the coast. When looking at riverine landscapes, both deposition and erosion play a large part. Erosion tends to occur in the upper reaches of a river with deposition occurring further downstream. When a river mouth intersects with another body of water and the pace of the water slows down, deposition may occur. This is how river deltas are formed. When looking at desert landscapes, erosion, transportation, and deposition occur via wind processes. This results in different dune formations, such as longitudinal dunes, crescent-shaped dunes, star-shaped dunes, and transverse dunes. Karst landscapes are generally soluble rocks that form into caves and underground drainage systems. The process of erosion is quite extreme and can leave some truly incredible landscapes and landforms. The following image shows the global distribution of major outcrops of carbonate rocks. As you can see, karst landscapes are common throughout the world. Now you have an understanding of the biophysical processes that help shape this planet. 
In our next video, we will look at tectonic shift, and the effects this has on the land. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Till next time. Think about things differently.